guys, my name is Arwen Rogers, and we're t I'm going to be teaching you guys a class, per your request, uh, for some dance-based conditioning. And don't let the word dance scare you. Dance is an action for everyone. It is not just for professionals. And you'll find that out when you're doing our workout for today. So we're going to be getting started with a combination of upper body work and lower body work, and it will be based in Pilates and conditioning and strength training and it's a very simple to follow along with. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's go ahead and get started. So start with the feet a little wider than the hips and then take the arms out to the side. Pull the low belly in and up. Tuck your tailbone down towards the floor. Take a nice long back and let's start with taking a couple of gentle twists. So pulse to the right and then to the left. So pulsing and pulsing. Use your breath. Exhale twice as you go from side to side. Just getting a little bit of action in the torso. Take deep breaths. And if you like, you can do what I'm doing, bending the elbows, touching them onto the shoulders, and that will make it a little easier. If you have any kind of strain, that's fine. Four more. And three, and two, and one. And then back to the center, arms out to a T, and then bend the knees just a little bit, and then twist the torso over to the side, touch the ground, and then come back to the center. Let's take that again. From side and center, side and center. The tailbone is going backwards, so give yourself a little bit of room. Keep the arms nice and strong. Imagine that you're holding a long stick right behind your back. So as you turn from side to side, you're keeping that spine straight, and the arms are straight out to the sides. One more time to each side. And last one, back to the center. Now start to take, pushing off from the toes. Keep your knees bent. So it's almost as if the ceiling is dropped. When you're staying underneath that imaginary ceiling, using just your toes to push yourself from side to side. Shift the hips over from right to left. Taking deep breaths. Taking the arms out to the side. Now get ready to hold one side and then bend back down. Push off the ground and back to center. Really try to feel that suspension as you go up and then yield into the ground floor as you go down. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, make sure you're keeping your core strong. Strong lines through the arms and legs. Two more and then switch to the other side. Bend down, press up. And down and up. Deep breaths, drop low, lift up, and drop and lift. Four more, lift, and three, push off the toe, find that suspension, two more. And last one, coming back to the center, turn your toes out, heels towards each other, arms come in front like you're hugging a beach ball, and take a pulse, going down and up. Make sure the tailbone is dropping straight down between the heels. Your back is straight. Your core is lifted. Arms are strong. Give a little bit of resistance, pushing the hands downward just slightly. Eight more, and seven, six, and five. Four more, three, two. Now take the arms out to the side. Out, tap the toes, then arms go up. Tap side to side, arms out, and lift. As you're working here, really try to use your back muscles to move your arms. So feel the chest, back, and arms working together. Deep breaths, four more, and out, and three, and out, two, out. Last one, coming back to the center, pulsing the legs out to the sides, pressing deeply into the heels, feel the inner thighs activating. Now pulse it to the, to the side. Taking a nice deep lunge, keeping the legs at 90 degree angles with each other. Deep breaths, hands come to the hips. And then come back to the center, pulse it again. Down and up. Almost there, now get ready to take it to the other side. Lunge it down, just really warming up into those legs. Stabilize through the feet. And then back to the center again. Arms come out this time. Push the arms, squeeze them into, into the hip, into the arm sockets. Deep breaths. Now take it over to the side. 
crossover, bend and lunge, deep breaths, and then take it back to the center, open out to the side, and then over to the other side. Here we go. Now we're going to be taking one of each. So come back to the center, and then go side and center, side and center, deep breaths, almost there, four more. To the side and center, side and center, two more. And last one, bend back to the beginning, taking the heels off of the ground, lifting up and down. Really try to find your balance, stabilize your ankles, take deep breaths, keep the core lifted, and feel lightness in the upper body. Arms come up overhead, hold the heels up, and just pulse down, down, down. Really burning into the legs and ankles. Deep breaths. Nice work. Almost there. Last four, three, two, and one. Straighten the legs, turn the toes forward. Inhale, stretch the arms up. Exhale, sweep flat back halfway down. Inhale, coming all the way up. So you may be touching the floor, you might not be. Make sure that your back is flat as you go up and down. And for some of us, keeping the legs a little bit bent will be more comfortable. So you get to choose straight or bent knees. Almost there. Four more, down and up. Three more. Inhale to come up. Exhale to go down, two more. And on your last one, take the arms out to the T, flatten your back, bend your knees, and drop the tailbone, pulsing. Pulsing low, tailbone goes to the back of the room. Deep breaths, almost there. Really want to get into those big muscle groups of the quads, the hamstrings, and the glutes. Now hold your torso down, lift your heels off the ground eight times. Up and up, almost there. Deep breaths, four more, three, two. Now get ready to balance, keep your back flat, squeeze your legs, lift up onto your tiptoes, and release. Clasping your elbows, straighten the legs part way and sway your torso from side to side. Make sure your back feels good. Releasing the tension. Two more. And last one. Back to the center, bend the knees, slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Shrug the shoulders back three times. And then arch your tailbone backwards, hands slide down the legs. Roll forward into your stretch. Straighten the legs again. Now hands to the front. Bend the knees and straighten just three times. Two more. And last one. On your next one, bend the knees. Roll all the way up. Working through the spine. Come to standing and then shrug your shoulders back. Three. And two. And one. Arch the spine. Slide the hands down. Last one. Extend your arms out in front of you and put all the weight back into your heels. Start to tap your toes. For some of us, bending the knees a little bit will make this a little easier. So deep breaths, tapping the toes, warming up the shins, pushing back into the hamstrings. Now release the feet to the floor, bend the knees three times, and then straighten, going a little deeper into your stretch for your hamstrings. On your third one, Extend the legs as much as you can. Walk the fingertips out and push the weight back into your heels. Feel the sides of your body getting longer. Feel your arms stretching, your legs and back all at once. Now bend your knees. Slowly roll up all the way through the spine to standing. And then shrug those shoulders three and two and one. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of warm up for the arms now. So you're welcome to use arm weights, or you can go just plain. <laughs> you don't need to use them. Um, I usually use about one to three pounds. Uh, that's usually plenty. Arms are going to be far out from the body, so it takes a little more challenge. Bring the heels together, toes are turned out in a V position, and then just start to pulse, arms flapping up and down just a little bit. Now lift up onto your tiptoes and test your balance. You may notice that there's a bit of wobbling going on, and that's all right. We really want to build the core and the leg power to hold ourselves up while the arms have something to do. 
Let's go ahead and take the arms forward for four, three, two, one, and out, two, three, four, and forward, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and forward, two, three, and out. Hold it a few more times forward. This is the last one. And out and hold. Get ready to lower the heels, lower the arms, and then lift everything up overhead together. Take it down and up. Plie through the feet, bending at the knees and ankles. Keep your heels on the floor once they touch. And then lift off, find your balance. Almost there. Four more, and down. And three, and down. Two, and last one. Holding upright, elbows bend out to the sides and start to close the elbows and open. Now remember, if your ankles or calves are getting too fatigued, you can always put the heels down. But try to keep the heels as close together as you can. Squeeze the inner thighs and feel that midline of the body helping to develop your balance. Deep breaths, forward and open. Squeeze the chest, squeeze the back. Almost there, four more. And three, and two. Now hold it in the center. Keep the pinkies facing each other. Palms face, your, face towards you and pulse upwards. Add a little pulse with the heels. So it looks like a jump, but we're keeping our feet connected. Deep breaths. You're really gonna start to feel this in the shoulders, the biceps and the chest. Take deep breaths. Make sure you have lots of oxygen coming in to support the movements of your body. And eight more, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and done. Bend the ankles, bend the knees, arms come out to the sides in a W position. Just simply straighten the legs and the arms together. So you're going from a Y position to a W with those arms. Y and W. Take deep breath, squeeze the back muscles to pull those elbows in. Now you'll notice that we have the arms extended quite a bit. That's why you don't want to have a super heavy weight. We're doing mostly endurance lifting to help you build the ability to move for long periods of time with good form. Almost there. Squeeze the elbows in. Extend the arms out two more times. Now hold the elbows in. Pulse the knees out. And then cross the arms in front. Cross and open. Cross, open. So, some people ask me, why, do, why does dance conditioning or bar use so much pulsing? <laughs> what kind of strength does that build? And so it builds a couple of different kind, kinds of things. Um, dancers are really interested in doing lots of jumps and leaps because it looks really cool, it's really fun, and it's, it's a power move. So we have to build that elasticity in your ankles, your feet, your knees, so that your jumps are smoother. So that's one reason why we do it. And now coming back to the center, story time is over. Sometimes I like to tell you a long story to help you get through the exercise. Now turn your feet back to parallel. Arms come out to the sides. We're just going to be going across in the front twice and then open out to the side again. Holding up through the belly and really anchor that tailbone. So watch out for arching in the back. You really want to keep everything right underneath your midline. Let's begin. So take the arms cross, cross, open. And cross, cross, open. Keep your rib cage right on top of your hips. There's kind of a tendency, especially if you've got a flexible back, um, to keep those ribs. You want to keep them right on top of the hips. So cross, cross, open. And cross, cross, open. Cross, cross, open. Cross, cross, open. Now take the arms in front and crisscross just as fast as you can. Go ahead and bend the knees. Keep the tailbone directly on top of the heels. So you're upright. Good. Keep crossing. Push into those legs. Stabilize the whole torso. And then take the arms. Row out. And then take a mini squat. So just halfway down. Pull back and forward. We want to be able to work several ranges. So a lot of times, in most fitness classes, I see them always doing the deep, deep squats. And that's great, there's nothing wrong with that. We want to have the ability to keep the heels on the floor so that you can develop your calf and ankle flexibility. It also helps to work your quads slightly differently and gets you into your legs in a different way. So that's all. 
Go ahead and take the arms down by the sides. Now we're going to take a deeper, fuller squat. So I'll turn sideways so you can see. You're going to be sitting down as far as you can, take the arms out in front of you, and then pull the elbows back. Palms will be lifted. Let's begin. Take it forward, thumbs up. Rotate, palms up. Squeeze. Use your lats and your shoulder rotator cuff. Pull everything in. So we're still working a lot of arms. I like to work arms. They're sometimes overlooked because our legs are so powerful to begin with. Super important to have balance in the upper body and the lower body. Pull together. Good. Two more. And last one. Now getting ready to add a little combo. So walk to the top of your mat. You're going to be taking a lunge. Sweep the palms up. Pull the knee in. And then squat. And then lift up again. So keeping on that same leg. Lunge back. Pull up to your balance. Palms forward. Squat. And then come to your balance again. Let's take that down. Lift. Squat. Point up. So this is called a lunge, this is a passe, a deep squat, and then a passe. Take deep breaths, lift up, squat, and lift again. Reach back, stand up tall, find your balance, almost there. One more time, back in your lunge, up to passe, squat deep, find your balance. Arms are just by the sides, and just tap the ankle, ankle to knee. Make sure that the foot is attached to your leg so you really work that back of the hamstring. Deep breaths. Almost there. Whew. Take deep breaths. This is a lot more work than it looks. So squeeze the leg, pumping it strong. Four more. Three, two, and one. Before we go to the second side, take the legs out to a neutral and then arms out out to the sides. We'll take just a little bit of an interval before we go to our second lunge. So bend the elbows in front and take double twist and double twist. Using a little bit of core and ab work, make sure the legs stay stable. You're only moving your waist. So this is not a big twist. You really want to use your abdominal muscles to do the twist. So we don't want the legs bopping and popping around. So keep it stable. Almost there. Two more. Last one. And then take the arms by the sides. Reach one. So if you're lifting up a suitcase, and then over to the other side. Work those obliques. Side and side. Side. You can reach one arm out long. Keep the shoulders engaged. Deep breaths. Almost there. Last eight. And seven. Six. Five, four, three, two, and one. Get ready to turn over to the other leg. Get ready for your lunge, passe, and squat combo. So here we go. So start with just the legs and we'll add the arms. So lunge, passe, squat, and passe. And lunge, passe, squat deep, passe. So arms lunge forward while the leg lunges back. And then forward and up. And back. Passe. Find your balance. Squat. Find your balance each time. Deep breaths. So important to be able to stand on one leg. Gives you so many advantages in any task that you do, whether you dance or not. It's always good to have that balance developed. And then squat back. Lift up. Lunge back, passe, we're almost there. Squat and passe. We have one more set. Lunge and passe, squat, passe. Hold and just take the leg down and up. It's like you're playing the violin. <laughs> one foot is the bow, the other is the string. Play it up, down and up, down and up. Balance, develop the back of the hamstring. The quad and hip bones are straight. All works together. Almost there. Eight more. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Go ahead and come back to the center, taking the toes out again. Arms come slightly in front, bend at the elbows, 
Squat down deep into a deep plie and then open the arms. Squeeze together and open. Deep breaths. So we're going to be adding some spinal movements to this in just a moment. So for now, just get the arms and the legs to bend and straighten about the same time. So when we start to use spinal movements, you're going to be getting a standing ab crunch. So you want to feel the core, the top of your head, and your tailbone will come together. So go ahead and bring them together. Tailbone and head curl together, and then everything opens up. Here we go. Curl and open. Curve and straight. Squeeze the arms in, arms out, legs go down and up. So all those skills combine together. Curve the spine, contract the abs, exhale as you go down, that will help. Inhale to open up. Exhale down, inhale up, exhale, and inhale two more. And now hold your contraction, take the elbows in, hold gently down. So you're doing a standing crunch, keep your tailbone underneath your heels, right on top of them, use your abs. So your rib cage is shortening over to the front of the hips, almost there. Eight more, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hold your deep plie and pulse it. Almost there. Should be feeling quite a lot of heat by now. Take deep breaths and make sure that you're getting water throughout the class. Nice job. Hold, go ahead and hold the legs in place. If your legs are too fatigued, you can do this with straight legs. But if you need more challenge, just want to get a little extra burn, keep those arms out and take small circles. So these are quite simple movements. I mean, I always told people that when I was a professional dancer, 80% of the time we were doing simple movements that anybody can do. And that's the bulk of the training, is a lot of simple movements. So take deep breaths. When you have a really good skill set building on those simple movements, then you can do complicated dance moves. So take deep breaths. You've got this. Eight more. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now palms are up. Cross the body and open out. Cross the body and open out. Cross the body. You're almost there. One more time. And out. Now keeping the legs, you can straighten out the legs and take a little bit of a shake out. And then if you like, you can remain there or you can come back down for another set. Deep legs. So take the arms in front. Palms are up this time just to work a different part of the shoulder rotator cuff. Start to pulse the arms, crossing one on top of the other. Take deep breaths. Keep your core lifted. Strong legs. And put a smile on your face. That's part of dance training too is that we are smiling even when we're working hard. Sweat's pouring down the face, we're still smiling. It's all good. Almost there, eight more. Seven, and six, and five, and four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and bend the knees, turn the toes forward, arms out to a T, slowly lower, flat back down, and then come all the way to the floor. Relax into your stretch, release the weights for a moment, Take a moment to wipe your sweat off. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> Deep breaths. And now go ahead and bend the knees. Drop the tailbone back behind your heels. Hands come forward. Just try to get a little more depth. Good. Straighten the legs again. A little longer stretches usually in dance conditioning. Just because we want to make sure that we relax all the muscles completely. Nice work. Go ahead and bend the knees, slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Excellent. Good job, you guys. So, I always hate to say that was the warm up because <laughs> sometimes people get a little bit, oh no, that was, I barely made it. But you will make it. So, if you have something to stand on, like a block or a stair, you can do that, or you can do this without. I'll show what it looks like if you don't have one of these props. So, you're going to be taking one leg out to the side and you're going to be dipping into your hip. So you'll dip the hip and then lift. So you'll dip the hip by bending the standing leg and then lift. 
So that, we'll do a couple of them without our prop, just so that you can get that feeling. We want to use the side of the hip, squeezing to lift. So your hips are going to be off-center the whole time. So off-center by going down, off-center going up. Do a couple more like that. That's kind of a little jazz dance feel. So really lift from that IT band, tensor fascia lata right on the side of the leg. Deep breaths, two more. And last one, come back to the center. Point your other foot out to the side. Bend your standing knee. Tilt your hips so you're really stretching into that side hip. And then come up, down, and up. So notice that the hips are always off center so that we can really start to work the side of the hips. This doesn't get worked a lot in traditional exercise, at least not consciously. So I'm having you think about it and really exaggerate that movement. It's important to be centered, of course, but it's also important to have some asymmetry training. You want to be able to adapt to many different things in your daily life. And also, if you have dance on your mind, we love to do asymmetrical poses. And then come back to the center, go ahead and cross the ankles over, just to help give a gentle stretch to the outer hip and thigh. Take eight more, seven, and six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now you can repeat that if you don't happen to have a prop nearby. Otherwise, you'll put a block or stand on a stair. I really like stairs because then you can use the wall around you for balance. Take one foot on top and make sure your heel is all the way on the block. So if the toes don't completely cover it, that's fine. But make sure that heel is there. Hands on the hips so that you can see if your hips are going asymmetrical. Now do the same thing with a straight leg. Straight leg down, straight leg up. All we're doing is lifting the hip and then lowering the hip below. So off center. This one is awesome for your deep low abs. It works through your core, your back, your hip stabilizers, inner and outer thighs. It's a great full body strengthening exercise. Take it down and up. It also helps you learn how to develop better balance. So take deep breaths up and down, up and down. Two more slow. Now get ready to take it a little faster. Here we go. Take it up, down, up, down, up. I love this one. I use this one a lot, especially if I'm feeling out of balance or tight or have pain or issues in my hips or low back. This one's a really good way to kind of retrain and reset those muscles. Almost there, four more. Three, two, and one. Oh, when you come off, you might feel a lot of tingling, a lot of activity. Just go ahead and take a little gentle pound. Sway the hips from side to side just a few times, and we'll come to the second side. Standing on that block, making sure your entire foot is supported so that there's no issue with balance. Straighten both legs, and then go up and down. So if you're on a stair or a block like I am, you're keeping the legs straight. If you don't have that prop, remember you can do what we did previously with the bent knee and the tilted hip. So you can do either one. Take deep breaths. So going slow. The first couple times I did this, my range was very small. And that's normal, that's fine. That is very common. So just make sure that you're working up and down, moving the hips, and it doesn't matter how big of a range of motion you have right now, that will develop in time. Now let's take it a little faster. Up and down, up and down. Oh my goodness. This one really burns out the muscles quite quickly. I have to smile and talk through it because it is a lot of work. Almost there, eight more. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and done. Go ahead and come off and start to swing those hips from side to side. Maybe take a small circle, keeping the legs straight so that the hips have a chance to really recenter themselves. Take your circle the other way. And then inhale, float the arms up, legs wide, flat back all the way down, and just see if your hamstring mobility is improved. Take your hands to the floor, or maybe even use the block to help support and hold you up. Take deep breaths. Lower your butts. And then bend the knees, slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time, and then shrug those shoulders back. Excellent work. 
I'm going to take this one more round because I really, really love what this does for your hips. And you have the option to add weights for this round. So bring the right, right one foot onto the block and then take the arms out to a T. If the arms become too fatigued, just simply bend the elbows. But keep those elbows up so that you're working in the shoulder area. So it doesn't matter, straight or bent. Taking the, this leg out to the side, you're just going to go tap the toe and then bring the heel in to touch the block. Tap the toe and the heel. Now you can do this with or without a block. That's fine. Tap, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel. Now pull the leg out to the side and then dip the hip and lift a little higher. So you're just taking that hip out to the side a little more. Remember if the arms get fatigued, just bend the elbows a little bit. Drop the hip, lift the hip, drop. So you're still doing that same asymmetrical movement in the hips, so it should feel kind of off-center. That's what you want. Good. And two more. One thing that will help your balance is if you really think about stabilizing your head to the ceiling so that your hips can be as wobbly as they want. And then come back to the center. Whew. Let's go ahead and take that directly to the other side. If you need to take a moment to sway the hips, you can do that. And then set it up. Let's get ready for the second side. Arms may be straight or bent. Start with the toe taps. Toe to heel. Toe to heel. Toe to heel. Toe to heel. Almost there. Four more like this. And three more. And two. And now taking the leg out to the side. Hold it off the floor. And then tap the floor and lift. This one takes a lot of coordination. So the first few times you do it, you may want to do it with no arms and just work on getting the hip and leg to coordinate together. This takes a lot of back strength, a lot of hip strength, and you're gonna feel it. Just be happy, we don't have to do these very long. We have two more, and last one. It feels like a long time, but I promise it's not. Let's go ahead and move your equipment out of the way. Moving your block and the weights, and please grab a quick sip of water. It'll be really, really important for you to stay hydrated. And I'll go ahead and meet you on the floor. All right, guys, so we are back, and now we are on the floor for our floor work. So I've cut up this video a couple ways so that if you only have time to do the standing sequence or you only have time to do the floor sequence, then you can have a choice. But bonus if you can do both in the same day. So um, let's go ahead and start lying on the back. And if you like, you can have either a block or one of these little fit ball to place between the knees. This just helps you to keep your pelvis nice and stable while we do some bridge work. So taking your shoulder blades all the way underneath your back, so kind of lift your chest up, put those shoulder blades underneath, and then put your palms flat to the earth. Walk your heels in as close to your hips as you can, and just start to lift just the tailbone up and down. Squeeze the knees together, and push your heels down before you go into a big lift. So a lot of times I see people do bridging, and they just lift their hips without really thinking about where it comes from. So we're trying to focus I'm pushing feet down first, and then pulling the low belly in second, and then lifting the hips third. So let's try that out. Push the feet, lift, push your belly up and down, and then lift your hips. So those three steps. And then take it back down again, push your feet down, pull your low belly down, and then lift your hips. Now take it a little bit faster in sequence. Feet, belly, hips, hold, and take it down. Take it again. Feet, belly, hips, pull, and take it down. You'll notice that your hamstrings start to help you out more. So it's not just putting the pressure in your hips or low back. Now let's take it all in one smooth movement. Push the feet down, roll the hips up, hollow belly, come back down. Push your feet, belly in, hips up, roll it down. Take it in, smooth lift, and down to the floor again. Smooth lift up. And smooth, lower down. Now take it a little faster. Smooth up and down. Up and down. So remember, the hips don't have to come very high. You really want to focus on good foundation with the feet, 
belly button pulling down so, so your abs are supporting your back, and then you'll really target the hips and glute area a lot better. Okay, so it's about quality, not about being super high. All right, now take the hips and just squeeze inward on the knees. If you have a prop that you're using, you can really feel how it's working into the inner thighs. Take deep breaths, folding the hips in steady, and then take a swing in the hammock. So right hip and left hip, one at a time. Keep pushing your hands down into the floor. Keep pushing your feet down. Feel the backs of the hamstrings contracting. Take deep breaths. Inhale and exhale. Sweeping side to side. Strong, strong hip movement. Dancers spend a lot of time with their legs, so these bar conditioning classes, um, I like to focus a lot on leg work, just because that's usually what dancers are looking for. And then take the, leg, the hips all the way back down, hug the knees into the chest, move the crop off to the side, and now taking a little coordination. We're going to be rocking forward and back along the spine, and then going into a push-up position. So hold the backs of the legs, so we'll build on to this. So just start with the rock first. So rock back onto the shoulder blades only. You're staying off your neck. And then come up to your sit bones. Roll back and up. Roll back and up. Roll back and up. Last one. Roll back. Now cross the ankles. Bring the head forward just a little bit. I'm moving my props out of the way. And then roll back again. Stay off the neck. Cross the ankles again. Stretch into the hips. Push off the hands. Roll back. Press the hands. Push yourself back. It's pretty fun. So you want to be able to build momentum here. Good job. Now, watch once. You're going to be rolling back. Keep those ankles crossed. Then push up on the tops of your feet. And then you'll jump back to the plank. If you're not interested in doing quite that much yet, I'll show a modification. So, roll back. Plant the hands, untuck the knees one at a time, and then you're in your plank too. Okay, so that is what you can do. Let's go ahead and start. Everyone together, sitting up, and then roll yourself back, keep your ankles crossed, plant the hands, push back, and then lower down into your push up plank, belly on the floor, hands right beside your ribs, and squeeze your hands into the floor as you lift up. Watch out for shoulder blades. Make sure that they're staying down and back. Here we go. Belly button lifts, and then bend your elbows back, and bend down just enough to activate the triceps. You don't have to touch the chest to the floor. We're focusing on a different technique. So deep breaths, down and up. Keep your core lifted. Push the tops of the feet into the mat. Give yourself a little bit of activity in the legs. Good. And then press yourself back onto your feet onto your feet, tuck the toes underneath you, and start to breath forward and back. If you'd like to get a little more activity for the core, lift your knees half an inch off the mat, and that will give you a little more. Rock and roll forward and back. Rev it up. Now getting ready to step right foot to the right hand, and then step back into that crouch. Left foot to the left hand, and step back to the crouch. Again. Kind of like a tiger pouncing. Lunge forward and back. Lunge forward and back. Just alternating right and left. Building coordination between the upper body and the lower body. So you push off the ground. Feel the momentum as, as your weight moves forward and back. Almost there. And last one. Hover and hold in that crouching plank, and then just tap the knees and lift part way. Lift from your belly. Pull up as if you're being pulled up by the belt. Lift and lift. If you want to add some intensity to this, go ahead and jump and lift the hips up, 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 up. Four more. Three more. Two. Get ready to jump the feet forward between the hands. Coming all the way up to standing. And then take a deep seat all the way down. Use hands to help. Hold up to the knees. Lift your feet and alternate toe attacks. Right, left, right, left. If you need some back support, put the hands behind you. Try not to lean on them as much as possible. 
See if you can use your core strength to hold yourself up. But your hands are there in case you need some back support. You can also do this on your forearms. Take deep breaths. Almost there. See if you can try taking those hands away from the last four. Three, two, one. Now cross the ankles. Rock and roll back three times. Two. On the third one, you can jump back to your plank or step it back. Plant the hands. Jump back and hold your plank. From here, tapping the knees right and left. Deep breaths. Almost there. Right, left, right, left. Pumping into the legs, pushing the arms so that you feel almost like you're trying to push away from the ground. Feel the low abs pulling it up. Almost there. Four, three, two, and one. Now walk your hands a little wider. Turn the fingertips out and take a full push up. Ten of these. And nine. Eight more. Take deep breaths, you guys. You're almost there. Halfway there. Five more. And four more. Three, two, and one. Lower all the way down onto the mat. Working our back muscles. So keep your hands tucked into the chest. Hands off the ground. Elbows squeeze in. Take your feet a little wider, almost to the edges of your mat. And push your feet down. Push your feet down to come up. I know there's kind of a reflex, but we want to see if we can keep the feet down. So anchor them down, maybe put them underneath the couch. <laughs> Make them stay down, and you'll feel it differently in your back. Almost there. Whew. Take deep breaths. And three more. Two. And one. Holding upright. Now push just the left leg into the floor and lift your right leg up and down. Deep breaths, up and down, up and down. Now take that same leg, take it side and cross over. Side and cross over. So we're working a different part of the glutes and the thighs. <laughs> Deep breaths, side to side. Really anchor the other leg on the floor so that you're not wobbling. If you need to have the elbows down for more support, that's fine, but really try to challenge yourself. Keep those arms up, lift up higher, squeeze the legs across, and switch. Go down for just a breath. And then come right back up. Anchoring the leg. Start with just pulsing. Other side, leg lifts just straight up and down. Keep pulsing. You've got this. Almost there. Now take it cross and side. Cross over, out to the side. Anchor your standing leg so that you really feel very powerful, very grounded. In dance, we often do things that we would do standing on the floor so that we can learn how it feels to be completely stable and still and balanced and powerful. So I want you to imagine that you are standing on your tiptoes and you're holding this leg and moving it any way that you want and you have perfect balance. That's what you want to feel. Then come back to the center. Woo. Lifting up, gently stretching out the abdomen and then hold the tailbone back to the heels and stretch out your back. Nice job, you guys. Let's go ahead and come into our side position. If you want to start, you have the option to use a hand weight if you choose. And let's go ahead and lie down, legs out to the side, bend the knees so that they're about a 90 degree angle from your hip, maybe a little bit more open, but just make sure that you've got some support there. Drop down onto your arm, prop your head up with your hand, and you're just going to be starting Hand weight comes to the thigh, and just lift and lower up and down, up and down, up and down. Now if the hand weight is too much, you can just move it off to the side. It's all good. I like to use a hand weight so that I'm paying attention to how my leg feels. So I'm really trying to contract all the way from the outer shin all the way up into the hip. Up and down, up and down. Now knee to the chest. In and straight out, in, straight out, in and out, in and out. Four more like this, and three, getting ready to take it in a combination. 
Now starting back with your center, you're just going to go lift and then knee to the chest. Lift straight up, knee to the chest. Leg is staying bent for this one. Whenever you move fast, sometimes it's easier to move the leg if it's bent. Deep breaths up and in, and up and in, up and in, up. Almost there, four more. Up, should be burning by now. Three more. Strong legs are developing, two more. And last one, good. Knee down to the ground, place the weight behind the back of the hamstring, and then kick the leg out, and then cross over. Kick back, and cross. Deep breaths, and out, and in. Keep the core strong and lifted. Keep the back flat. Deep breaths, almost there. Two more. Now hold it out to the side, move the weight. Straighten the leg and lift. So you're kind of bringing your chest down, so you're starting to angle. Bring that leg behind. Working a different part of the glutes and inner thigh. Deep breath. Oh, wow. I almost feel more of a stretch on my non-moving leg. <laughs> That's kind of common to feel as well. Almost there. Four, three, two, and one. Tucking that knee behind you. Prop yourself up onto your forearm and watch out for a collapsing shoulder. So stay up, use your abdominal muscles on the, on the lower side, and then take your inner thigh work. So lift and lower, lift and lower. Point the foot. If you tend to get foot cramps because you're not used to pointing the foot, you can do this flex, that's fine too. I like to do point because dancers are always working for having pointed toes. It just makes a longer line, it also helps to keep your leg muscles engaged all the way through. So it's a good way to stay focused. All right, now go ahead and bring the knee in and out. In and out. In and out. In and out. Make sure that shoulder stays open. You're still using your abdominal muscles here, so you're not collapsing. It is lifted. There's no relaxation for these abs right here. Stay up. Almost there, two more. Now get ready for your combo. So take a lifted leg straight and then bend to the chest. And lift and bend. Lift and bend. Believe it or not, we're doing a lot of abs <laughs> all the way through class without necessarily having to do crunches or sit-ups. You can still work your abdominal muscles just by paying attention to how they support your leg and arm movements. Almost there. And lift. Three more. And lift two, and lift, and one. Now, we're gonna be taking this leg out to the side, sweeping wide, and back to center. Now, if this is too much leverage, you can take the weight off, or you can do this with a bent knee instead. So you can sweep out with a bent leg. I like to do it straight, so it's up to you. Whichever one works. <sighs> take deep breaths. Should start to feel some trembling in the inner thigh right now. Lots of work because those muscles get strong. Almost there. Four more. And three. And two. And one. Nice job. Go ahead and come up into a pinwheel shape. So one leg is bent in front, other leg's bent behind. And just take a little, little twist to the side and then to the other side. A little side twist and side. As you're doing this, you're lifting the hip off the ground and then sitting the hip back down. This will help to stretch out your quad, your hip flexor, and develop hip mobility, which is so important. Almost more important than having super flexible muscles. I'd rather have joints that have their full range in a safe range of motion. Good. Just take a couple more. And now hold on one side. Stretching, arm up and over, and then switch, other side, maybe lie the elbow on the floor to really open up the side waist in the back, and then switch. Before we go to the other side, just bring the soles of the feet together. This will stretch inner thigh, outer thigh, and the hips all at the same time. So take your butterfly stretch, bottom kanasana for you yogi people. Take deep breaths, bowing forward. So good. 
Now a lot of times when we do dance training, we will work a muscle group and then stretch for a long period of time. Just for the sake of time for this workout, we're just adding little stretches in between so that the muscles have time to recover and to function fully all the way on, on both sides. So let's go ahead and come to your other side. Prop your head up so you get to relax your torso for this first set. Bend the knees so that they're about a 90 degree angle from your torso and then option to use a weight. Let's go ahead and lift and lower. Here we go. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Take deep breaths. Make sure that you have lots of oxygen in your body to support your movements. This will help you to feel more happy and energized for your workouts. If you hold your breath, you're going to leave a workout feeling really tired and wasted. So make sure that you're really using the breath. Up and down, three more, and two, and one. Now tuck the knee into the chest, in and out. If you like, you can straighten all the way, or just keep a slight bend in the knee. Doesn't really matter, all works really well. Keep the hips stacked right on top of each other. Legs have a bit of space between them, so don't let the legs collapse on each other. Stay parallel up. Deep breath, and in and out, in and out. Four more, and three, and two. Getting ready for your combo lift, here we go. So we'll take the legs together to begin. Lift up, then into the chest. Straight out and into the chest. Up. If you need more challenge, you can do this with a straight leg, but it is very challenging. So I recommend keeping the knees bent for both moves. Side and to the chest. Side and into the chest. Out and in. Deep breaths. Almost there. And four more. And three. And two. And one. Good job. So go ahead and slide the weight down to the space between the knee and the hamstring. And then extend and bend in. So the knee taps the floor and extend out. So you're bringing the chest slightly forward each time. It should feel a tiny bit awkward. Awkward usually means that it's just a coordinating pattern you haven't done yet. Yeah? So all we're doing is getting familiar with moving a different way. Deep breaths. I think so many times we, we experience feeling awkward and then we stop. And if you stop, you never get to explore how that movement can transform in your body. So, be open-minded about exercises that are new to you. Almost there. Four more. And three. And two. Now hold it behind and just lift and lower. You may need to adjust the weight or move it off completely. Turn your chest all the way to the ground. If you'd like, you can move your arm off of your head. Give yourself a little bit more movement. The range of motion, almost there. Eight more. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice work. Go ahead and come up onto your forearm now. Go ahead and shrug your shoulder a couple times so that you feel what, it, feel what it's like to collapse. That's not what we want. Yes, firm through the side body so that you're trying to create some space. I like to imagine that I've got something there, and you could actually even use a ball to hold yourself up if you're having trouble with, with knowing when you're doing it. Fold that leg that just worked behind you for, to give it some rest, and then place the weight onto your inner thigh. Let's begin lifting and lowering. Lift and lower. Keep this torso firm. Shoulder has no weight in it. You're using your core to hold yourself up. Deep breaths. Yes, this is an abdominal workout too. If you shrug into the shoulder, you're not going to get much out of this. So make sure you're staying out of the shoulder and into the abs and leg. Up and down. You guys are so close. Deep breaths. Almost there. Two more. And now hug the knee into the chest. Here we go. In and in and in. Now if you like, you can flex the foot. Or you can point the foot to work on activating more muscles. Deep breaths. Almost there. Last eight and seven. Six. Stay out of the shoulder. Firm through the core. Three more. Two. Now add the combo. 
lift the leg and bend to the chest and lift and bend to the chest lift and in up and in deep breaths you're still doing excellent work always be proud of yourselves <laughs> make sure that you really feel that squeezing in the legs four more and lift three more pull it back in the shoulder use your abs last one in and up. Now sweep the leg out to the side and center. If you need to drop the weight, you may. Just get that range of motion in the hips. Inner thigh is working. Point the toes as much as you can. Really feel the entire leg active. Squeeze your quad. Squeeze your inner thigh. Squeeze everything. Deep breaths. Almost there. Four more. And three. And two. And one. Oh, wow. <laughs> Excellent work. So go ahead and come onto your side and then let yourself take that hip mobility. So twist, lift your hip off the floor, and then sit the hip back down. Don't force it. Just see how far it can go. And you can also put a block underneath the hip if this range of motion is a little bit challenging for you. So it doesn't really matter where you are. It just matters that you are moving. Good. Almost there. Use your abdominal muscles. This is an oblique twist. It's a seated oblique twist. That's where we want to feel it. In the obliques and in the hip sockets. You'll also feel a nice stretch along the quad and the outer thigh. Almost there. Nice. And now stretch up and over. Just lengthen out the abdominal area, the side body. And then lie down on the floor, stretch your waist, push your hip into the floor for a little deeper stretch. And then back to the center. So we're going to be finishing up soon, um, starting with a little bit of arm work. So I like to use a ball or a prop for the knees. Um, it just helps to keep the inner thighs engaged and the low core pulling in and up. So we're taking just a little crab walk here. So with the ball, you will be lifting one leg up, so if you find that the prop doesn't help you, you can always drop it. So starting with the arms first, fingertips facing the hips, bend the elbows, drop the hips, and then bend the elbows. So everything's moving at once. So we're gonna be doing this a couple different ways. So start with everything bending and collapsing, then lifting up. Drop down, lift up, drop down, lift up, and drop and lift, and drop, and lift. Now keep the hips right where they are. Don't move the legs at all, just bend the elbows. Just a little pulse. It's a tiny, tiny activation. The tricep muscles in a smaller, more challenging range of motion. So you don't want the hips to be moving with this. Just the elbows are bending, bending, bending. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Last four, three, two, one. Good job. Go ahead and take a seat. Wrap the arms underneath the, the legs for a moment. Sit up tall and feel the shoulders and neck stretch out. Bob your head from side to side. Good. And now lifting up, off of the floor again. And now lifting the foot off one at a time. So if you have a prop between the knees and it doesn't really work for you, you can put it down. I like to have it there so that I'm staying more equal to the hips. So lift the toe just barely enough. Push your standing heel into the floor. This prop might escape in just a moment. <laughs> it's okay. If it escapes, it escapes. Just keep moving. Right foot and left from side to side. Keep the hips high. Press the opposite hand and foot into the ground. Deep breaths. And last one. Nice job. Hug the arms underneath the legs again. Sit them nice and tall. Stretch out the neck, stretch out your arms, let those wrists release. And then go ahead and move your prop to the side. Let's get ready to stretch it out. So lie back onto your first side. Oh yeah, first side was this one. <laughs> oh no, it wasn't. <laughs> that happens. All right, so extend, bring one leg over the top, push yourself down to the floor, I like to always combine stretching with abs so that you still feel like you're getting as much strength 
soft as possible while you stretch. So lift your hips up and then dip the hips down. So with one leg in front, you're going to feel more of a stretch on that outer thigh and it'll help with that IT band. Deep breaths. Now hold it up. Stretch as high as you can. Press. Lift higher. Lift higher. Push both feet down, 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 down. And change. Go ahead and extend your torso to the ground. Fold your bottom leg and stretch out your quad. Deep breaths. Make sure you're pressing the hips forward. Your belly button is pulling back. So you feel this opposition. The stomach is pulling in, but the hips are pushing forward. That will help you to get a really nice opening through the front of the quad and the hips, hip socket. Nice job. And then release the foot. Taking your right your leg up, top leg up, and then wrap your, your bicep underneath your calf. Now push your calf down onto your arm. And if you lose your balance, bend your bottom leg to help you stabilize. Then hold on to the outside of your foot, and then just start to gently kick the foot up into the hand. Your arm will be underneath the calf. This leg doesn't have to be all the way straight to get a great stretch, but if you feel like it feels really good to you, go ahead and use your arm leverage to pull the leg closer to the face. Deep breath. If you want a little more, extend the bottom leg. <laughs> and try to keep your balance. Nice. And now take the leg forward and across. If you have a really deep split, you can be here. If you'd like to modify, bend the knee. And then move your shoulder to the floor. So you have a couple ways to do this stretch. Pull out of thigh, split, or a little more modified bending the hip knees. Two more breaths. And last one. Bring yourself up. Flip over to the other side. Let's take all that fun stuff to the next side. So lie down nice and deep. Sitting up tall. <clears throat> Oh yes, forearms first, and then cross your leg over. Let yourself up. I'm so eager to get you all relaxed on the floor. So let's go ahead and take our side plank, oblique strength, lifting up by pushing this foot down into the ground. So stomp it down, and that will give you a lot of leverage to stretch out this hip in a very satisfying, strong way. Take it down and up. Lift up. Now getting ready on your last one to hold it in place. Stretch as high as you can. Push the foot down. Lift the hips higher, 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 higher. And then lower down. Now come to the floor all the way. And then prop your head up. You might need to adjust your foot if you need to. And then fold your back foot behind you. Push your hips forward. Pull your tummy back. And feel that quad stretch. You can also do this with the leg on the floor. So if that's too much, just put the other leg down while you're stretching out the quad. Deep breaths. Almost there. And last one, release the leg. And now, lift your top leg up, put your bicep underneath the calf, flex the foot, and then for me, I found that I needed some balance. So I bend the bottom leg in, and then hold on to the outside edge of the foot, and just start to kick the foot into the hands. Start with the bent knee first, so that you can build a little bit of flexibility that way, and then start to straighten the leg, maybe pointing the toes. If you have a little bit more range and you want to try your balance, you can extend the bottom leg. It's a nice cheerleader stretch here. <laughs> Good job. And now take it into your, into your crossover. So if you like to take it into your split, remember you done that in dance class, you can take that leg over, and that's, you can move right into it, or you can take a modified with the knees bent, and then lay your opposite shoulder on the floor. Both stretches are going to do great things, so it just depends on what's appropriate for you right now. Deep breaths. And last one. Bring both knees together. Lie on your back. And tuck both knees up into the chest. Ankles are touching exactly side by side. Knees might be together or they might be slightly open for your chest. So either one is fine. You can hold on with the hands as you push them back into your torso. 
Try to get your tailbone to be flat on the ground and your back of your neck on the ground. If you need more intensity, wrap your elbows around your knees and flatten everything to the floor. So this just helps to compress your abdomen. It helps to stretch out your low back very deeply. And it also helps you to get your hip sockets a little bit of compression so that you can get better circulation in just a moment when you extend. So let's go ahead and extend the legs. Everything out, nice good morning stretch. Super long. And then release. Rock and roll to sit up. Turn and face the front. One final stretch for your splits. You can start with the legs uh, about hip socket distance apart and then just slowly open the legs with the hands on the toes or the shins until you find a comfortable split. From there, reach forward for two and then pulse the arms back for two. And then forward for two and come back. So when you're building splits flexibility, it does take some time. And so usually when I'm training dancers, we don't always just hang out in the splits at first. So it's really important to have a little bit of a stretch and then an elastic recoil. So allow that muscle to go back and forth, in and out, so that it gets used to the idea of splits. And then when you feel comfortable, hands come forward and just start to walk yourself all the way down, relaxing, eventually flat back, forehead down, and relax. And slowly come up, bring your feet together, taking the arms behind you, interlace the fingers, open the chest, and bow forward. Stretch out your chest, sway the shoulders from side to side, right to left. Do a massage on the shoulders. And come all the way up, crossing the arms over head with the shoulder blades, and then pull the elbows down towards the belly button. And then switch arm if it's on top, wrapping, drop the chin down, feel the back of the neck stretching, and then just take a little bend from right to left. Back to the center, arms up and over to one side. And then the other side. Both arms reach up and exhale down to your heart center. Thank you for your practice today. Hope to see you guys soon for more bar, dance conditioning, yoga, Pilates, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. See you soon.